I want to thank God for this time that he has given once again and especially at this festive time, Christmas, we are celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. Tomorrow many people will be killing goats, chicken and everything else. To them that is Christmas. We thank God for our safety up to this day. For the whole year, the Lord has been together with us. We have moved up and down. We have gone to offices. We have done our work. We have gone to our farms. We have gone to our businesses, maybe our shops, our companies for the whole year. We want to thank God so much for the protection. So we welcome all of you today for yet another service. We welcome our audience all over the world through the media, through the social media, that is YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok. We welcome all of you so that you can be able to celebrate together with us as we celebrate Christmas. Today, we want to learn about what our God is after. In other words, we can say God is after our restoration. God is looking for restoration from us. And for us to be able to learn about our restoration, we have to start from the beginning of the world, from Genesis that is when we can be able to appreciate about God. You appreciate the objective of God on us. But one thing you have to understand is you are special. You are wonderfully and fearfully created. In other words, when God was creating you, He was shaking because you are wonderful. God was making you as a beautiful creature. God was creating something that, at the end of it all, wanted to be as wonderful as it could be. Scientists, they have said that for a person to be made, or for fertilization to take place, There are about 300 million seeds that are released to fertilize an egg. Out of 300 million seeds that were released, you are among that 300 million. Every other seed was killed in the process. What I'm trying to say is, your struggle started even before you were created. By the time that seed, that is you, were able to be fertilized and the process started of your creation, there was a very big struggle. If you go to, the, to read about scientists, how fertilization takes place, there are processes, there are steps that take place by the time fertilization takes place. In other words, out of the 300 million seeds, about 299 million seeds died and you survived. So you must be special. At whatever angle you look at yourself, if you are able to struggle, and succeed by surviving the fatality of about 299 million seeds that died and you survived. You must be special. 
There must be a reason as to why you succeeded to survive. Why were you not killed by that chemical that killed others? Why were you not worn out by the process that worn out others? It means there is a special function and a special objective that God created you. And that is why today God is not looking at us for condemnation. God doesn't want to condemn you doesn't want to condemn you because of your behavior. But God is looking at restoration. The main objective of God is to restore us. And for us to be able to understand the birth of Jesus Christ, then we need to see this process. We cannot just understand the birth of Jesus Christ if we do not know his objective. And one of his objectives, and the main one, is to restore human beings. We are told in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 that God made us in his own image. When the 299 million seeds died and you survived, God wanted to have an image of himself in you. He wanted you to be a perfect man, a perfect woman. He wanted you to be a perfect creature. The people who resembles God. That was the objective when he was creating a man. And because he could not be exactly like God, he had to leave some boundaries for us to be able to observe. Some instructions that we are supposed to follow. So, after a man was created, God was happy because he could see his photocopy in a man. He could see the creativity in a man. And one test that God gave to a man immediately he created was Adam to name every tree, every animal, and everything else that was created. The names came from Adam. In other words, the maker, God, after making Adam, he tested his creativity by giving him an opportunity to name animals, plants, the heavenly bodies, and everything else. And it is out of that naming that Adam never saw a person that could be able to resemble him. And God was able to create a woman from Adam. And Adam said, now this is my rib. Now this is my bone out of my bone. But when you go to Genesis chapter 3, 23, man was banished from the Garden of Eden. After sinning, after falling, after being tricked by the devil. Who is this devil that was able to trick the creature of God, was able to trick the image of God in a man? The Bible says the Satan, the angel Lucifer, Satan, the devil, was a very cunning person. But before he became cunning, we are told that the devil was perfect. Before, before the devil was thrown to the, to the world, before he was thrown to the earth, the Bible tells us that the devil was perfect. The devil was beautiful. When you talk of beauty, then he carried that duty, the devil. We are told that he was covered by all precious stones in the Garden of Eden. That is the devil. We can check in Ezekiel chapter 28. That is where you get the description of the devil. The 
you see how the devil was. He was created a beautiful angel. No? Very wise, very holy, perfect. That is Ezekiel chapter 28, starting from verse 12. Part B says, You are the seal of perfection, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. That is the devil. You are in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone adorned you. The stones like carnelian, chrysolite, emer emer emerald, topaz, Onyx, Jasper, Lapis, Lazuli, Turquoise, and Beryl. These are precious stones, very expensive, that cover the devil. Your settings and mountains were made of gold. On the day you were created, they were prepared. In other words, when the devil was being created, God took his time because he was trying to create a perfect creature. You are anointed as the guardian cherub, for so I ordain you. You are on the holy mount of God. The devil was on the holy mount of God. You walked among the fiery stones. You are blameless in your ways. From the day you were created till Wickedness was found in you. You know, the devil was so beautiful. Eh? We are told he's the, he's, the, he's the star, the bright morning star. You know? In other words, he was glittering, the devil. So beautiful. To an extent that he felt that I'm so beautiful, and he became proud. And now he wanted to become more than God. He wanted to elevate himself beyond God. That is the wickedness that was found in him. And the Bible says, through your widespread trade, you are filled with violence and you sinned. So I drove you in disgrace from the mount of God. And I expelled you, guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to the earth. I made a spectacle of you. That is the devil. If it is about beauty, then you cannot compare anybody with the devil. If it is about wisdom, you cannot compare anybody with the devil. And this is a gentleman now who was the guardian of Eden, who was able to trick Eve and Adam to fall. And that is why we see the man is banished from the Eden, garden of Eden. And God started the business of restoration. God wanted us to be able to go back to him, to be having fellowship. You know, Adam, and Eve, they were having fellowship in the evening with God. God was working every evening to come and find out how your day has been. How, is, how are the animals? How are the plants? How is everything? God had fellowship with Adam and Eve every evening. And that is now the work of God, the birth of Jesus Christ. The birth of Jesus Christ is to bring back the fellowship that we lost in the book of Genesis chapter 3. And for us to be able to understand the journey of restoration, we shall look at the book of Luke chapter 15, verses 11 to 24. Yeah.